Hi, I'm Jimmy and I'm a car enthusiast. I love cars of all types, but here I convert cars from gas to electric. Let's check up on the latest project. So we're working on the Frontier still. Um, it's been kind of a slow week. Uh, not a lot of big things happening, but some smaller stuff is going on. So I've been fleshing out the wiring. Now I've pretty much got the harnesses, the three main harnesses ready to go actually into the car. I've got a couple relays here uh, for the inverter and for the uh, cooling fan. And I've got the throttle wire wired up here to the Resolve EVs pigtail and uh, I can use the ECU brackets from the original ECU to mount the Resolve. Um, just had to cut out, some, notch some sections, but that is going to bolt into the chassis and hold the Resolve EV nice and tight. So you can see the three main harnesses. This one is uh, for the PDM. So it's got this round plug up front. You have your, your CAN bus, the twisted pair, and the others are 12 volt ground and signal wires to the Resolve. So everything can talk to each other. Then this is for the motor. So this one goes to the inverter. This goes to the motor. Uh, this goes to a cooling uh, temperature sensor. And you can see also we've got the CAN bus here with the twist pair. Um, some shielded, heavy duty shielded wires for some of the ones that go to the motor where it's probably got a lot of RFI. Um, and yeah, so not, I don't know, seven or eight wires to hook up. And then lastly, this is for the BMS. Uh, so we got a bunch of grounds here. Uh, of course, we've got the CAN bus and we've got the other signal wires. So I've went ahead and extended these wires as much as I think I'll need. Um, we may have to extend them in the future or trim them back and that's totally fine. Just wherever the wire wants to live, where it's happy and there's no tension, that's what we want. So this is basically all of the wiring that goes into the build. It's not really that complicated at all. Um, there's less wiring in a full EV swap like this than there is in doing an engine swap, for instance. So there's less wiring here than on a normal engine with all the sensors, the fuel injectors, the spark plugs, the knock sensors, the temperature sent, all the stuff that's going on. There's just less wire by the numbers. So you can see these unterminated connections are all that we have to hook up. So there's probably like 30 of them in the whole system. So once we get the motor and stuff mounted in its final spot, we'll go ahead and we'll throw all the wiring in it. So the transmission, you remember we had a big issue where it wouldn't shift in any of the gears or out of the gears and it, it was locked up, it wouldn't rotate. So we uh, found a transmission guy, Frankie, and I think he's gonna be a great help to us. Um, he's got an amazing shop full of hot rods and all sorts of stuff. And he said that when they are stored vertically like that, sometimes the gears can fall down um, into like, the shifting mechanism um, basically so that it goes into gear when other parts of the lever haven't moved which can cause it to bind up or maybe it went into two gears at once which is why it won't move so he's pretty confident that he'll be able to fix this current transmission um, it didn't look like there's any damage there wasn't any chunks on the magnets i looked inside the drain plug and there was no rust it was clean so um, yeah, fingers crossed we get that back from Frankie and it's good to go. So the motor's out. We're just gonna wait on that transmission to get back. Um, you can see that Dave was in here and he started doing some painting. So it looks really good. You can see uh, he's just painting everything. There was really faded factory paint and there was a little bit of surface rust in spots. Um, so he's just got the old Rust-Oleum on there. It looks really good. He wants to take this truck to car shows and stuff and show it off and and uh, hopefully it'll pop out there with the other vehicles now that we got the frame and everything all cleaned up. So that's pretty cool. Also, he was doing some work on the front bumper and grills. And you can see this is the grill here. He put um, some 
uh, bumper paint, I think they called it on there. And he did the uh, lower fascia. So he's thinking about doing a custom badge for the middle. <laughs> but um, so that's about it for updates this week. Uh, we're hoping to get that transmission back ASAP. And as soon as it's back, now that we've got all the paint done, we can put the motor in there, hopefully for the last time, um, make sure that the transmission's shifting and working okay. Once we get the motor and the transmission mounted in, um, we'll have to weld some gussets, weld some brackets to mount everything. And then we'll go ahead and we'll do all the wiring. We'll install the charger and the inverter, all the low voltage wiring. And from there, what we'll do is I may test the vehicle again with the leaf battery as is. Uh, roll it up here to the front, plug it in and test everything and make sure we got a, a functioning setup before I dis disassemble that battery. And then that way, moving on, we know, you know it's a known quantity. So that's the plan. Uh, it should start coming together pretty quickly now as soon as we get that transmission back. Um, that's kind of a big hang up now since I got pretty much all the wiring done as far as I can without actually installing it into the vehicle. So thanks again for watching another update on the EV swap frontier. Uh, make sure you're subscribed if you're not. We're going to do a video every week until this truck is running under its own power. We're hoping to get it finished by the end of 2023. So, so that's it. Uh, thanks again for watching and hit the thumbs up.